my name is Rapsley, welcome back to Slay the Spire Modded for Take 2 at episode 100. Time to choose Marissa, go into Ascension 1, and hang on, quickly turn that off. Kill Nightmare, yes, the rewards one unlock Endless is here. B-E-A, U-T-F-U-L, let's go. Lose all gold to obtain a random rare relic is obviously the best one here for us. For our, uh, sprouting Branch, at the start of each combat, Gain five regen. Great. So as long as every combat goes uh, six length, six turns in length. Actually, no, just the five turns in length is fine. Uh, as long as every combat goes five turns in length and I take no damage, then I can just heal 15 over the course of it. That's actually pretty good. In fact, it's extremely good. My... Reaction is a little lackluster for what is actually an absolutely incredible pickup. And it can even heal us from damage that we're sustaining over the course of that particular fight. That is goddamn amazing. Woohoo! I may actually go for all four elites on this current path. Just due to the fact that we have this. Sprinkle Star Seal is good against half of the elites that we'd be fighting. Hmm. It's good against the boss at the end of the floor. Eh, kinda. I kinda do like having one copy of it at the very least in each deck. Uh, Curse of Doubt is pretty bad, but... Full stop. Really wanted that not to be a full stop, but it had to be a full stop. Okay, so it's seven extra damage to amplify this card. But if I don't amplify the card and play two instead, then I get two increments on charge up. Great. So I'm already set up for a double damage on my next attack. Hopefully we have a big spark. Never mind, small will do. Luminous Strike, Asteroid Belt, and Grand Cross. Probably none of these. Ugh. Earlier elite than I really wanted here as well. I'll just be casually turning down all those. Sorry, earlier shop that I wanted. Just really hoping for earlier elites overall. So that I can get the money and then go to a later shop and actually be able to benefit. Satellite Illusion, gain energy when the number of cards in your draw pile increases during your turn. So there is a way to make that into a deck, but I don't think we can make that into a deck that beats Endless. Well, no. I'll try and make that into a deck. Let's see. It's not going to be useful for a very long period of time. I'm going to have to find the synergy cards for it, but I wouldn't take the synergy cards unless I had that card already, so I'm a little stuck here. Ultimately, I am just going to have to take a card that I don't want at some point. Oof. This is awful. What a bad elite. So the enemy made me vulnerable and then hit me twice with very large hits in a row. Real annoying. Blue Candle, unplayable curse cards can I be played as well as... Um, those. So the upgrade to satellite is that it becomes innate. Yeah, that's the only difference. Alright, so we want to upgrade Master Spark just for the damage output that it's going to help us put up against these elites. That is actually the best opening hand. A whole lot of setup just got accomplished there. Ooh. Rising sweep. Giant master spark. Knocking with a couple of hits after as well. The enemy's already perma weakened, so no worries whatsoever with respect to having to throw in another weak potion. Alright, so there's no full defense this turn, and there's no kill this turn. That's okay. 
That's still a really, really great elite fight for us overall. Nemesis Spire Growth, all walkers and muggers. Okay, so we don't achieve any of that this floor. Drink your turn when the number of cards in your draw pile increases gain in energy. So if I shuffle my draw pile, that counts? Huh. I guess it makes sense, but I hmm, wasn't thinking about that. Uh, which of greed at the end of combat gain 15 gold amplify also gain a potion it's a little bit appealing this early you can also non-attack cards in your hand deal seven damage to all enemies twice no don't know what build that dark spark works in but i do want to find out amplification wand when you activate an amplify effect gain two energy yeah it's fine I'll use the Essence of Steel here. Because we are going to have trouble overall defending ourselves here. Hmm. Whoo! Track that sneeze coming on. Beautiful. I was really hoping I would have had a Master Spark in that hand as one of my attacks. Because that would have actually given me four block from the Amplification Wand. Two strikes in the next hand to kill the sentry in the back line. Come on! What are the odds? Not that high, but... Damn it! Really hoping they'd be on my side regardless. Specifically playing my cards in this order so that I don't trigger the charge up there. And I'll do that again this turn. Because as soon as I draw the Master Spark, I already have lethal. So I may as well just wait on that. <clears throat> Beautiful. A Razor. Infinite Spire. Re uh, right click during combat to activate. Usable only once per combat. Restart an elite combat against a different elite. The enemies will be stronger. Can be used three times. Uh, so we can use that to try and re-roll into a Nemesis to get a random relic. But other than that, probably not going to do too much. <clears throat> Collecting Quirk. Deal 9 damage to a random enemy for every 4 relics you have. Ultimately, this is going to be our win condition, so we will take that now, but it's not going to be good until later. Oh, God. Yeah, I am more than happy to try and go for this. Lagavulin is actually our best fight. I can weaken the enemy this turn, but I'm going to be weakening them permanently next turn anyway. So I may as well just kind of wait on that. They can deal 16 damage once, but it's 40 that I get if I wait. Yeah, I have to hold off for the Master Spark. Okay. Yeah, yeah, okay. This is actually getting a little more dodgy than I am comfortable with. At least we get an extra energy next turn. As our draw pile increases in size. And off of the back of that, we can set up a kill. Beautiful. Uh, pair, upon pick up, raise your max HP by 10, as well as a bunch of stuff we're not going to be taking here. Uh, cost zero if you've activated an amplify effect, but we only have one amplify effect in the deck, despite the fact that we have the amplification wand. Uh, here we'll lose the max HP. We're actually racking up a ridiculous amount of relics here on the first floor, which is the only reason that I found it reasonable to pick up Collecting Quirk as early as we did. Hmm. 34. 
34 would split the enemy, so I don't want to attack again. Yeah, just because I'm better off to split the enemy... Now. No, not now, damn it. Ah, uh, now I'm gonna get weakened as well. Oh, it's all awful. That'll work ultimately though. Uh, da -da -da -da. Unstable Bomb is interesting because it's always going to be 5 damage. Well, at least when unblocked because of the boot. But we're probably not going to take Unstable Bomb for that reason. Put a card from your hand on top of your draw pile is... I mean, that's, that's great for Satellite. Fine opening turn. Could be a little better. I don't want to burn my illusion star yet. We only get to wake up the enemy with a satellite illusion? That's kind of lame. Alright. Let's see what we can get done here. Let's, uh, illusion star. <laughs> satellite illusion. Ooh. Warming up is actually really good. We'll put the Satellite Illusion back on the top of the deck, which triggers the other Satellite Illusion. Then I'll Master Spark, and then Warming Up. Warming Up gives me Rising Sweep, a Spark, and Witch's Ley Line deal 12 damage, add 2 burns to your hand. So effectively, this is just me trying to race towards lethal at this rate. Okay, 13 incoming, we'll strike, strike, defend, again intentionally so that we still amplify our next attack. Beautiful. Incense Burner, every six turns gain an intangible as well as the Emerald Key of course. Uh, there's also the portable prop back here. Randomly get either Orichalcum, Amplification Wand, or Art of War. Lose that relic when the battle ends. I don't really want that. I think I'll be passing all of these. Uh, it's probably a good time to smith Collecting Quirk. It makes it hit an extra time already. It's already 27 damage for 2 energy with 3 hits, which isn't that bad. In fact, Steroid Potion here is super reasonable. Illusion Star and Hmm. Let's put a shooting star atop the deck and then burn that. That was way too early to do all of that, by the way. What an awful idea. What an absolutely dreadful idea I just had. Shame I went through with it. Alright. It's fine though, ultimately we'll be okay. So I can attack each of you once. Still not weakened. Or frail, and the enemy should probably let up attacking relatively soon. So, uh, hit the back line a couple times there. Okay, that goes there, and then one shooting echo, another shooting echo to the back line, and we're all set up. Beautiful. Okay, so I handle that entire fight awfully. Absolutely dreadfully from split until the absolute end. Not too pleased about it. Amplify effects cost no energy this combat. I mean, I still haven't been taking amplify effects. Uh, exhaust half of the cards in your discard pile and draw pile. Gain energy for... Sorry, gain energy and draw one card for every five cards exhausted. Uh, ultimate shortwave. 
I mean, I do cycle through my deck a lot. Ultimate Shortwave would be a way to make this deck already go off, right? I just take Ultimate Shortwave, cycle through my deck a couple of times, play the Collecting Quirk, blow the enemy up. Yeah. It's probably the best thing to do here. Cycling back to Ultimate Shortwave is so damn important. Yeah. Cycling back to Shortwave, so drawing two extra cards per turn each is really important and the shortwave very soon will start paying for itself we'll take the snack away uh it'll also most likely help us to play things like the collecting quirk or at the very least draw into it more regularly so i mentioning earlier um there's still a lot of cards that i want to remove from my deck now in particular the satellite illusion illusion star are uh, both on the chopping block now Illusion Star. <clears throat> Shuffle five cards into your draw pile. No, we don't have anything that would want to use that yet. Sweet. More than willing to cop my seven. Ah, if Open Universe was lower in cost, or at the very least Satellite Illusion was, I could have played both of those together. That would have been the exact combo we would have been looking for. Oh well. Okay, and we are set up for another single large hit. If this has to be it, that'll have to be it. Beautiful. Occultation, Illusion Star, and 6A. No. Remove the card from the deck. Definitely, let's get the Illusion Star out now. I do want to run that whole combo build later. It's just I don't think this is necessarily the time for it. Ooh, Master Spark. Saucy, ridiculous amount of damage there. Yeah, I am very, very pleased that I took the snack away. I felt like I was going to have to justify it for a long period of time, but no, it's it's been proving itself worth its own weight in gold already. Uh, so we don't want Jaxed, obviously, here. Uh, zero cost card becomes any more expensive than that, and I probably don't want to play it. So the mutagen's just for the extra strength on turn one, and that's fine. I could transform two cards here. Transforming two cards could actually be impactful for us. I mean, the extra strength on turn one does become really impactful later in the game. Because it means our opening collecting quirk is a third more effective than it otherwise would have been. Black potion and fruit juice both have to be taken here. So we take the weak potion, drink the fruit juice immediately, take the black potion. Uh... I think we care more about Steroid Potion than we do about Strength Potion because it's those singular large hits that we care most about, the ones that have Charge Up activated on them. And those hits are going to benefit more from Steroid Potion as singular turn than they will from Strength Potion. So I think we actually avoid the rest of that. Yep, not a great shuffle for us. It's fine. It's fine. It happens. Uh, let's use a Black Potion here. Ultimate Form. Uh, gain two strength and dex each turn. And if you get to play it for zero, you kind of have to play it, right? You just have to. So we're taking nine damage this turn. Unfortunately, Collecting Quirk didn't kill the backliner there, but god, it would have been nice had it done. Another ultimate shortwave as well, and we get Satellite Illusion out before we have to collect and Quirk. Ooh -hoo -hoo. We could have this one now. Hang on. 
gonna fire off that large attack. Wait another turn here. Play a single card before my collecting quirk and blow the enemy up. Lovely. Frozen Egg, one of the other power cards of your deck, it is upgraded, as well as a lot of cards that we're not going to be taking at this point. Centurion Mystic. Satellite Illusion still does need to get out of this deck. I guess I don't really need to defend here. I also don't benefit that much from the two attacks, though. I regen the two damage I take this turn next turn anyway, so... Not a priority, uh, not a priority singular of mine at all. If I added enough defensive cards to this deck, especially as expensive defensive cards, I could just stand around waiting until I throw off just one collecting quirk to finish the entire combat. Somehow I suspect I wouldn't find that too satisfying, but it is something to keep in mind. At the very least, it would only be a short-term solution. Because obviously, eventually, the collecting quirk is going to become a big hitter. Hey, Galactic Halo is an example of a card that is really good uh, in terms of giving us block and giving us charge up, and in terms of having its cost randomized. So we take a Galactic Halo here. Great, great, great pickup. Okay, so we get Lauren coming damage next turn. Ugh. Okay, at least we're intangible this turn. At least we're intangible this turn. So we'll ultimate shortwave, use Galactic Halo, and then I can pop off a giant collecting quirk here. Or I can even steroid potion collecting quirk. In order to make it deal an absolutely ridiculous amount of damage. And that in particular is why I... For a ridiculous amount of damage. Uh, that in particular is why I kept the steroid potion over the strength potion. Uh, Cursed dice can only be used once. When you would die, shuffle your hand and discard pile into your draw pile. You no longer take damage. If you win before you empty your draw pile in hand, heal 35% max HP. Otherwise, you die. Uh, at the very least, that's going to give me a benefit here. Uh, also, the, I have the die quest, which heals 25% max HP if you die. So both of those should stack, which means that I should heal 60% uh, of my max HP. Escape Velocity. At the start of each turn, draw two more cards and add a burn to your hand. That would be really good if it weren't for the fact that uh, the deck is so thin that adding those burns into our cycle would actually slow down the draw overall. Relatively soon, at least. We could do that. Right. Fossilized Dealings prevent the first time you lose HP each combat. Extremely ecstatic to see it. Bottled Flame, upon pickup, choose an attack, start each combo with that only opening hand. That was always going to go on collecting quirks, so let's get that done. We also want Gremlin Horn whenever an enemy dies. Gain an energy and draw a card. I also want the Abacus, but unfortunately I don't have the ability to take it here. Yeah, so it's probably on my part just card removal of a standard strike then. More elites. So I deal a ridiculous amount of damage there, but unfortunately I'm going to take some back here. I got no real playable defense in that first turn. I'll play the Galactic Halo rather than the Sprinkle Star Seal here. But I really do want that Sprinkle Star Seal out. Sprinkle Star Seal with the Sneko Eye might not be worthwhile. Starting to feel more and more that's the case. I'd love to use Master Spark here, but the Collecting Quirk is my savior at this point. Yeah, 18 for 5. Go for lethal. 
Uh, birthday Stone, whenever you play a power, heal for two HP, as well as energy flow, gain three charge up at the end of your turn. I would totally take that if it wasn't for the Snekawai. That said, we don't need every way in the game to gain charge up. Mm-hmm. Start the collecting quirk, just see. Beautiful, if we knock the frontliner on the ground, which we do. Okay, as long as I drop this defend, then I'll take no damage this turn. The buffer from Fossilized Helix preventing the rest of the incoming. Collecting quirks cycling around this quickly is absolute godsend. Oh, I couldn't activate the Amplify effect. Of course. It was too expensive to do that. Regen potion. Gain 5 regen. Obviously ridiculous for us here. Uh, I'm going to try to eat those though. Stack that atop the 5 regen that we have at the start of each combat. Oof. Absolute storm going. Hmm. I mean, I guess I Galactic Halo just for the... Just for the charge up. I'll pop this regen potion here. I don't think we're going to be in the fight for too long, but I do really want a good result. Do you want a decent amount of HP going into the final boss fights and stuff? Uh, tiny chests are pumping up, gain 30 gold, you're 10% more likely to find treasure in question mark rooms, as well as another steroid potion, as well as... No, no need for any of those. Ridiculous amount of relics so far. So, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18. Oh my god. I think Quirk is brutal by now. Just straight up murder that backliner. Ooh, Galactic Halo is an incredible pickup for us. In the next seven cards, we definitely draw Collecting Quirk, and that's definitely already lethal for us. All right. Singularity. Whenever you play a card that costs zero, increase the damage of a random attack on your hand by three. A quarter of our cards cost zero, but I still don't think we take that bet on Singularity there. Uh, Ultimate Shortwave should be upgraded. It increases the charge up gain of that card by more. So that's a difference for us. All right, so I've got intangibility on my side this turn, so we don't even need to defend. Not really if we don't want to. If I could Master Spark without the Amplify cost on it right now, I'd do that and then play the Galactic Halo, but I can't, so I should probably just play the Galactic Halo, just to protect my, uh, my intangibility. Intangibility? Sorry, my buffer. Yeah, because it seems like my buffer would be much more effective on a turn like this. So 36 by 6 is not lethal on the enemy yet, but if I want to wait just, like, a couple more turns, I might be able to get the Collecting Quirk just to blow up. The champ. Yeah, especially with this draw, we're going to be able to make that happen. So I need to play two cards next hand before I play my collecting quirk. And ultimate shortwave is one of them. We're fine. Beautiful. As it turns out, <laughs> I maybe could have held off just a moment longer. It shouldn't matter at all, but... Yikes. Divine Champ, hello to my new quest in the quest log. I still need to kill a nightmare, by the way. 
Uh, Galactic Halo, great. We'd like to take another of those. We're not going to take an Astro Belt at this point. Alice's Gift, Retain, deals 5 damage. Exhaust and Amplifiers to triple to deal triple damage. Yeah, and that's going to be really bad with the randomization, of course. Deep Ecological Bomb, we're not going to be taking that either. So let's just remove those quests so that I can get other quests in those places. Steroid Potion, great pick up there. Final Spark is really interesting as a Sneko I card. Just due to the fact that it deals 40 damage to all enemies for a random cost between zero and three it's really good that said is it going to be that much better than collecting quirk for that long because collecting quirk very soon will be lethal to all enemies for us at any point but one thing i do need to consider about collecting quirk is that it's not going to be great uh specifically in the position of fighting a bunch of enemies with thorns so I'm going to need to find a way to deal with enemies that have thorns, despite the fact that I have collecting quirk. Hmm. I suspect that isn't fixed by the final spark. Experimental familiar. At the start of each turn, add one spark to your hand. At the start of combat, you can choose one of three random cards. It costs zero this turn. At the start of combat, you can choose one of three random cards to cost zero this turn. One of three random cards in your hand, or at the start of each combat, you can add a ran uh, you can add one of three random cards to your hand. It costs zero this turn. I don't know. I mean, it's definitely better than Eternal Feather and Lizard Tail, no matter what it is. So I just take it. Okay, so there's only one nightmare on the path, so that means that I have to go directly to it. Don't really have too much of a choice, sir. Uh, okay, so I'm choosing a card that's not in my deck here. I'll choose Ultimate Shortwave and it just gets added to my hand. Okay. Interesting, I guess. The spark being added to my hand at the start of each turn is also going to be good for incrementing our mini Hakuro. This fight really could not have gone better for me. Goodbye, Spiker, and hello to Blaze Away. You played the last attack you played two times. Um, yeah, that multiplaying collecting quirk for us is really good. So we'll take a plate. Uh, we'll take a Blaze Away. Ha! <laughs> I can't take Chaos specifically because of what I'm trying to do here, but God, I do want to. Uh, we do, however, have Shroom Bag. Upon pickup, can uh, obtain two Parasite cards. Uh, Parasite cards can now be played. Uh, we do already have a Blue Candle, though, so, yeah. Uh, playing a Parasite will heal two HP and draw a card, then exhausts it. I mean, there's no downside to that. At all. Hey, we just take it. And then from the deck, we just want to remove... <clears throat> Excuse me. Probably just another small attack. Yeah, gotta make sure I go for the, the Nightmare. Otherwise, this is going to be hardly an endless. Okay, so Blaze Away for a very small amount. Just double play the blaze away, get the kill. Don't need any of those. We can just continue. Uh, we will have trouble with the nightmare. That's going to be a little bit of a problem for us. <laughs> Final spark, thank you. Good fight. Sporecromp is good for applying vulnerability to all enemies, but I think we'll be able to find bag of marbles over the course of this run, hopefully. I'm going to remove buffs from the enemy, so now I don't have to deal with all of the random shenanigans they were going to do. Awesome. So 
So sprinkle star seal, I think it was. Where is it? Uh, shoot the moon. Uh, remove a random buff from your target if it's not a boss enemy and deal eight damage and amplify removes all of their buffs. So now this enemy doesn't change its intent at all or anything like that. So I don't have to deal with it. Which is just great. So I did not want to be dealing with all of that. Hang on. The, the previous cocky attack only is a good idea if I actually end up killing. Oh my god, I kept screwing that up turn after turn. Uh, none of those needed for this deck though. Hello, Nightmare. Ooh, blaze away in the opening hand with a collecting quirk that's already double played. Interesting. Okay, we'll take one time off and we'll use that next turn. So, Spark, Parasite, Rising Sweep as well. One time off means nothing for us, right? Because we have no Amplifiers right now. So we play the one time off, then Collecting Quirk. Blaze Away plays a Collecting Quirk and then it plays another Collecting Quirk, which will have Mini Hakuro, which will have, sorry, uh, eight charge up for it. So this is some damage and then this is... I held a lot more after that. And never mind, the second one did not consume the charge up. Interesting. Really thought it would have. It should mean that now I draw. Yeah, collecting quirk and that's lethal. Art of War, if you don't play any attacks during your turn, gain additional energy next turn, as well as uh, an attack potion, not necessary. Uh, Machine Gun Spark is already just straight up 30 damage to an unblocked target due to the, the boot. But that's still not good enough in this deck right now. Wildly. Uh, Kill the Nightmare, so we'll unlock that. Defeat three bosses in order to pick a black card. Don't mind if I do. So we haven't even gotten, we haven't even touched the endless or infinite things that are going to start happening. Alright, collecting quirks, see if I kill any targets. I do, just the one though. It's fine enough. As long as I've removed one of the targets from the field, I'm pretty happy about this. Go. Another energy potion, not particularly great for us, but probably better than, not Essence of Steel, but Ancient Potion. Ancient Potion with Steroid Potion is obviously really good, but we don't need to maintain seven strength at any point now uh, for any significant period of time. A bit weird to start planning around something that we're not really going to be doing. There we go. Uh, Luminous Strike, Blaze Away, and 6A. No thank you again. The Coria, the Merchant Resource Cards, Relics and Potions. All prices decreased by 20%. Definitely a huge pickup for us. Uh, I actually think we've already got Lethal here, right? It's just collecting Quirk, Blaze Away. I don't need to the overhandle, just get stuff done. Spy Growth dies and we get the Centennial Puzzle, the first time we lose HP, it's gone back to all three cards. I wonder if the blue candle on playable curse cards can now be played still means that I lose one HP whenever I play a Parasite, despite the Shroom Bag. And because of that, I wonder if whether or not that will trigger the Centennial Puzzle. It's going to be interesting to see. Uh, not those though. Yeah, I just want more relics, so more elites, thank you. Alright, Blaze Away. I always forget about Blaze Away. I really
really ought to stop forgetting about Blaze Away. It's one of the most impowerful, uh, impowerful, one of the most powerful cards in my deck. Sing Ball, when any cards in your deck, you may raise your max HP by two instead, which is almost certainly gonna, what, uh, gonna be what we use almost all of the time. Also, one turn killed an elite there, so we've got a bunch of money. Uh, I also have it... have access to the knowledge that this infinite spire is going to be significantly reworked at some point. Let's just cast these out. Yeah, beautiful. Yeah, that uh, infinite spire is going to be significantly reworked at one point to remove, I think, or to partition the kitchen sink part of the mod from the endless part of the mod and to revamp the endless part of the mod. Cannot wait to see that, but we'll run with this at the moment. Take my max HP basically every time it's available. Ooh, speaking of max HP every time it's available. Take it here. Apotheosis is pretty good, but not in this deck. Master Strategy would be good if I didn't have the Sneko Eye. Uh, the Bomb is good, but not for a deck that's as uh, aggressive. We're kind of a very... We're, we're very much a go-getter. This is a pretty aggressive deck. It wants to get out there and do stuff itself. It's not a deck for waiting around. Every card I leave in my hand at the end of a turn is going to get burnt, by the way. So it's very important if I want to play a card that I just play that goddamn card. Yeah, because my deck is now just going to be ultimate shortwave and collecting quirk, basically. And I can play ultimate shortwave every single turn, which means that I can play all of the others. Beautiful. Ultimate shortwave can never roll its cost more than three, and it's already giving me four energy back, so... Always know that I'm capable of using it. Handmade Grimoire. At the start of each battle, yeah. For every fi uh, 15 cards in your master deck, gain an energy and draw a card. So we might actually want to keep our deck at 15 just for that reason. Uh, that also introduces the fact that the bloat introduced by those two parasites from Shroom Bag is actually benefiting us right now. Shroom Brew. If, uh, exhaust a card. Effect of this potion depends on what type of card you exhausted. We'll have a look at that in just a bit. Hmm, Galactic Halo getting a leg up here seems like a really good idea. Great. Time to go for our first floor three boss. Definitely take the millisecond pulsars here, so now I don't have to worry about amplify costs. I'm gonna, I'm gonna pop a steroid potion here, as well as the collecting quirk. There's 10 extra damage per collecting quirk there. Or per trigger. Yeah, blaze away, I don't really want to have show up in positions like this. Okay, uh, throw it. So... If I throw this at an enemy and then I exhaust that, that dealt 20 damage. Okay, well now I know that that was what that was going to do. Damn. Not really as helpful as I would have hoped. All right, so we will be taking damage in this combat. Oh well, it happens. And then collecting quirk for double. Destroy everyone. Get more quests for the quest log. Turn down the ones that we're never going to be using. Absolute magnitude. Stardust reverie. Shuffle your hand into your draw pile and then add that many cards, uh, random cards into your hand. That's obviously incredible with the, <laughs> the satellite illusion that we're not going to be playing. 
Ooh, Elite Strom and Additional Relic went defeated, and it's up against a bunch of options I don't want. Hell yes. So, now we're back on the first act. Meow gives us the Spear of Blight. Enemies deal 100% more damage. They have 50% more HP from the Shield of Blight. And Infectious Malware. Whenever you play a card, lose one gold. If you have no gold, lose HP instead. Oh, that is rough. That is rough. At the very least, uh, for the early game, we should be pretty well served by just playing the collecting spark every single time. Ooh! -hoo -hoo -hoo. Thank you for the extra relics. Oh, wait. I have collecting quirk and blaze away. There's no reason to do anything except for just that. Puzzle Cube. At the start of each turn, Puzzle Cube choose a, uh, chooses rather a random card in your draw pile. If you play that card, draw a card. Neat. Works really well with a thin deck like this. Simple Launcher. Reduce your charge up consumption threshold value from 8 to 6. Absolutely insane for us. Uh, we'll also take the Bronze Scales because that actually completes a quest. And then I'll take the Simple Launcher. Reduce your charge up maximum... Consumption value, beautiful. Uh, this is supposed to be shop relics over here, by the way. Is Darkstone Periat considered a shop relic? I suspect not. Uh, Peace Pipe, you can now remove cards from your deck at rest sites. I mean, as soon as I take that, I will just start removing every card from the deck that isn't Collecting Quirk, Blaze Away, uh, Galactic Halo, and Ultimate Shortwave. Effectively, just those will be left. I do have to take the Peace Pipe eventually. I'll take Omomori so I can take things that would have otherwise given me curses. Satchel is interesting, but it slows down combat far too much to take, in my opinion. Combat becomes so, so slow because you have to commit that extra... Uh, extra confirmation. Alright. Don't need that. Extra confirmation at the end of every single turn as well. Uh, we could get another copy of Parasite, which would be really good with the Shroom Bag, but the Relic here is also pretty good for us. And the Relic is another Relic, which is obviously really good for collecting Quirk. Uh, Quark. Quirk. Collecting Quirk. I'll get it right one of these days. Big Shroom Bag replaces Shroom Bag, which I already... Oh! I didn't know that you could have a Relic replace a Relic outside. Oh, I guess I did know that you could have that, actually, because uh, it happens in the Bloody Idol Golden Idol event. I didn't know you could have it as a reward of combat, though. Uh, Parasite cards can now be played. Playing a Parasite will heal three HP and draws two cards, then exhausts it. Okay, we now just want to put a bunch of Parasites in the deck. That's ridiculous. We'll take another Galactic Halo. I mean, it's another quest completion for me. 102 gold. Pretty good. Hello, Gremlin Knob. Even if that wasn't enough, we generated another collecting quirk there. Uh, Happy Flower, every three turns gain in energy as well as wall paint to pump up upgrade to random skills in your deck. Uh, let's hit that wall paint now. Sprinkle star skill change means nothing to us, obviously. Okay, let's toke and get the satellite illusion out of here first. It's been long, long, long overdue. I mean, I love that I can kind of just autopilot a lot of these battles. Uh, I don't really want to go to this combat. I want to go to a shop instead. Check it, pen. When we play a card, deal one damage to a random enemy. And that's also another quest for us. Juice your brains like normal enemy encounters and no longer encounter into question mark rooms. Really great pickup for us. Uh, none of the rest of these relics are actually particularly great, though. Free block at the end of a turn could be interesting. We'll take our Calcum and Strawberry, definitely. And Pennib. Every 10th attack you play deals double damage. Obviously incredible for us. Good. It all works out in the end. Uh, ooh. Free Blaze away. 
Always lovely to get. Bread of a Wishoku lover. Heal one HP when it exhausts a status or a curse. And we can do that constantly with the shroom bag. Uh, if it's treated 13 times, you gain 13 max HP and the relic no longer works. And we also have Matroshka. The next two non-boss chests you open contain two relics. <laughs> Immediately get one. Empowering Shard. For each axe you climb, gain one strength at the start of combat. And for each axe you climb, gain one dex at the start of combat. Warding Shard. Okay. So that's already going to be active for one strength and one dex every combat. But that's only going to get better. And those are relics that are effectively designed with Endless in mind. They can be great for us. Magic Broom. Every time you play three cards that cost zero, draw one card. This is ridiculous. I think it used to draw you two cards as well, actually. Ornamental Fan. When do we play three cards, three attacks in a single turn, rather? Deal. Gain four block. God, I was trying to read pen, not pen, I'm sorry, uh, letter opener from my, from my mind. Getting a hell of a lot of money right now. Pretty proud of that. All right. Uh, let's smith again. Get this Galactic Halo. This is just so that I can retain the 15 cards in my deck at this point in time. Hmm. Right. Now Parasite... Strike another parasite. Just trying to make sure that I am as best set up for this as I possibly can be. Yep, it's a real shame both of those galactic uh, galactic halos are really high, and the blaze away is also really high, and the collecting quirk is pretty high. Still managed to work with it. Don't need any of those. Non-directional laser, we would never take. Bottled mercury, yeah, it's not super relevant to us. Uh, okay. Potions don't so much matter to us anymore. No longer being able to rest at rest sites also doesn't really matter to us. Uh, and enemies having one strength, that probably matters the most. So, Sozu is probably the one that matters the least right now. All of these should just be elite rush floors for me, effectively. To get as many relics as possible. But also, as many question marks as possible is a great idea. Those question marks in particular being a great way for me to possibly pick up the Necronomicon. One time. Uh, a bunch of stuff I don't really want there as well. Medical kit. Unplayable status cards can now be played when we play a status card. Exhaust it. As well as uh, preserved insects. Enemies in elite combats have 25% less HP. We'll take the um, uh, the medical kit first, just in case it immediately gets replaced with... Uh, just in case it gets replaced with the membership card, because then I'd buy that and then go and buy the preserved insect. But I'll buy a bag of preparation, then the preserved insect. Ooh, ginger is a harsh thing to miss out on, but preserved insect is preserved insect. Also, I'll take the regal pillar, sure. Uh, I don't think I can get another copy of Mutagenic Strength, but I'll see. Yeah, I can't get a second copy of it. Circle it, collect as many as you can. Okay, so now that I know that I can't get a second copy of that, by the way, I'm just going to reload the space. Because by all rights, that shouldn't say, hey, we'll give you a special relic, despite the fact that it doesn't give you a special relic in this position. So now it's probably a right idea to just transform two cards here. Defend and a strike. Fairy Destruction Ray and Mana Convection both picked up there. Neither of them great. Uh, Ritual Dagger does get really, really big over the course of a run like this, but I don't really want it. I already have a better scaling effect. One of 20 cards to add to the deck, sure. One of the problems with doing this is that you do have to add a card, even if you don't want to take one. And it would be cheating at this point if I was like, oh, okay, well, I don't want to take a card, so I'll ignore this. Because 
my decision is made based on the fact that I've seen these cards. Whereas before, it's literally just like, hey, does this actually work? Um, I guess Gravity Bead is the one that makes the most sense to take here. Specifically for the ability to apply weak to enemies. That said, I probably will token remove it pretty soon. Let's definitely get the Fairy Destruction Ray out of there. Whoa. So the Get a Blanky quest just came up. That's one of the reasons that I wanted to take... Ooh, neat. Uh, that's one of the reasons that I wanted to take the Regal Pillar in the previous shop, just so that I have the ability to get the Get a Blanky quest. Uh, let her open that. Every time you play three skills in a single turn, deal five damage to all enemies. That's what I was trying to read before. And the Mummified Hand when to play a power card, a random card in your hand cost for the rest of the turn. Eh. Not even going to take any Galactic Halos anymore. Definitely go for this fight. We desperately want this fight in, for, in particular. For the Red Mask at the side of each carnival time, one week to all enemies. Ancient Tea Set, whenever you enter a rest site, start the next combat with two extra energy, as well as Beetle Shell. Uh, every tenth time you gain block from a card, gain double the block. I mean, God, we're just collecting relics left, right, and center. Uh, we really need the shovel at this point so that we can dig and pick up relics from that as well. Let's get a mana convection out of the deck. Hmm. I think I might go for another nightmare. Get Light She Knot, which is... Uh, it's a weird one. I think it's lose 25% of your max HP, start each combat with three regen. Which is obviously going to stack really well with the nourishing branch or whatever the other one was called. Sprouting branch. Sorry. Ooh. Well, blaze away costs zero here, so we're on a good path. I mean, if I don't even have to, don't even have to blaze away afterwards. Perfect. Uh, Joker card. Every 15th card you play is played twice as well. Blood Vault. The start of each combat heal for 2 HP. Add a card to your deck. We don't want any of those. Add a black card to the deck. Ultimate form. Gain two strength and decks each turn. If you have orbs locks, then gain two focus each turn. It's also the best defense. Convert all of your block into strength. Lose that strength at the end of your turn. And virus. When drawn, add a random virus into your hand. When I play it, add a random virus to your discard pile. Exhaust. Ultimate form is the only one here that's probably better than the average card in our deck right now, just because of collecting quirk. Um, but the problem with ultimate form is that eventually it'll just get purged off of us. And also it's really expensive. Oh no, we do have Snekawai and we have Mummified Hand. Okay, never mind. We will take an ultimate form. It also immediately upgrades being added to our deck because we have the frozen egg, despite the fact that it wasn't showing there that it was going to do that. I mean, like, I can just kill. Maybe I should just focus on killing rather than doing all of the tricky stuff. Just play the collected quirk at the start of each combat. I'm pretty sure at this point it's just to kill no matter what it hits. Hmm. Okay, maybe in boss fights I can be a little bit more nervous about it and play it like this. Right. Oh my god, we're gonna draw like every card in the entire goddamn deck. Yep, that's pretty ridiculous. Okay, so now 224 damage 19 times. I just don't know if we can get lethal is the problem here. Alright, well we'll try. Oh, sweet, it worked. Defeat three bosses in order to pick a black card. Menacing. The next attack you play stuns any enemy it hits for one turn. Want to know why that obviously seems pretty good for us? I'll give you one guess. 
collecting quite kits multiple times, so it'll stun them forever. Skip for rewards. Oh, right. yeah, I know what's happened here. So the reward screen is still there, but because I selected a reward from Infinite Spire, it tried to give me that, which cancelled all the rest of the stuff I was trying to do there. Right. I'll take my Mac, take B. Now there's no more rewards there. Then I'll take this, and great, I get punked. That's really, really sad. I don't want another ultimate form in this deck at all. Uh, I'll probably take it, but I don't really want it. I actually really wanted the menacing. It's unfortunate that bug happened. Yeah. It's happening again as well, by the way. Hang on, can I even proceed? Is it- it's not gonna even let me leave? Okay, hang on. Maybe I have to wait until I get to the next floor before I take my card selection there. That is to say, the black card selection. Okay, at least this is all the same. Uh, I play more than six cards in a turn occasionally. Pandora's Box will transform two defends in my deck, possibly making them good cards. Sure, we'll give it a go. Ultimate Shortwave is actually pretty good. 66C is not. Okay, so we go to the next floor. Now can I take this? Yes, but it's still going to be not the right card. Damn it. Bunch of question marks and then a bunch of free elites, effectively. What's better? <sighs> Don't need any of that. Just keep bouncing. Ooh, okay. Lose the Golden Idol for 333 goals. Golden Idol is actually probably worth more than that over the course of this, but I could get another Golden Idol later. I'm going to take the instant cash. Remove the Master Spark happily from the deck there. All right. I hope this is no longer bugged, because this uh, this actually softlocked my game last time. But it's from Marissa Mod. A black cat appearing out of nowhere stopped in front of you and blocked your path. The cat reeks of death and misfortune, and when it looks upon you, you feel a chill in your spine. It meows at you, attempting to draw your attention. Pet the cat, and you become cursed with wraith. Ignore the cat, you try leaving immediately. Uh, but that's the fight option, right? Yeah, it seems the cat doesn't want to let you leave. So I'm going to play ultimate form. I'm going to play another ultimate form. That's the important thing to me, specifically, just having all of those ultimate forms played. Just so that later we'll be safe. So now the collecting quirk just blows up the enemy. Enemy is dead. They come back to life. Oren is now back to life and has summoned all of these beasties. All right. So the beasties have undead contact. Whenever you are attacked by this enemy, gain a stack of wraith. On death, apply one wraith to you. Uh, wraith is not explained as to what it does here. Uh, Inferno Claw, whenever you receive attack damage from this enemy, add a burn into your draw pile. Interesting. Alright. So I'm going to pop off the Collecting Quirk there, which does get the kill and doesn't solve like the game. Hell yeah. Beautiful. Cat Cart, gain one charge whenever you climb a floor. Whenever you would die, consume all charges and heal four HP for each of them. So it's a savior from death. Always neat to have. You approach a hallway. It is covered in strange purple webs. The sound of skittering voidlings can be heard in the different distance. Let's fight the fight the voidlings. So we've tried to do this recently and died to it, but we're not going to this time. You can tell because I said that we're not going to this time. Fight the nightmare alpha. So fighting the nightmare alpha for me should probably just be about trying to blow up this enemy in one turn. Double up on ultimate form as well here. Damn, that's powerful. Alright. 
So the enemy already has reality shift active, unfortunately for me. You stopped my turn! You rude prick! You stopped my turn halfway through! Oh, that burns my blood. And again! Okay, so yeah, it... My understanding was multi-hit attacks that went over reality shift triggered the enemy's block, but then still did damage. No, but the enemy is invincible. Can only lose a certain amount of HP every turn. Never mind. I finally found the buff on them that makes him invincible. Uh, add a black card to the deck. We've also got Nunchaku. Every time you play 10 attacks, gain an energy. Black card is menacing. Hey, we eventually found it. Lovely. Uh, and this event doesn't want to let me leave either. Okay, so I'll just manually choose on the screen to leave. 1616, 16, uh, sorry, 66C needs to get out of the deck at this point. Just going for all of these extra elites. Okay, so the final boss this floor is... Uh, Donny Decker. Okay, we should just be able to blow them up. Oh, at the very least, they can place a way to kill. I was kind of expecting, almost cockily, I guess, that that was going to be a kill. Uh, giant head for a random relic. We'll do that in a moment. Uh, more bank. Whenever you climb a floor, gain 12 gold. No longer works when you spend any gold at the shop, as well as mango. Raise your max HP by 14. Okay. Now we'll take this random relic, and we get... Ooh, Tori. Whenever you receive 5 or less unblocked attack damage, increase it to 5. Reduce it to 1. Sorry. It's boot. Increase it to 5. Reduce it to 1. Reduce the one, that's what I meant there. Uh, I'll just lose the six max HP now. All these smooth stones, thought it's combo with one dex. Yes, please. I have no clue how many relics I have at this point. Okay, so 21. So we have 63 relics at the very least. That's my understanding from all of this. Bag of Marbles, finally! At the start of each combat, apply one vulnerable to all enemies, and that's going to be another quest for us completed. Pancraft at the start of boss combat, tier for 25 HP. That'll actually be pretty good for us later. Focusing Shard, at the, every act you climb, upgrade one random card at the start of each combat. Okay, so eventually our whole deck is already going to be upgraded, so we don't have to worry about that too much. Not that we were really worrying about that, but if we were worrying about that, this would be the point at which we would know not to worry about that anymore. Savvy? Uh, one thing I do need to do is I have relic sorter, right? So let's sort the relics so that I know all of the ones that have counters on them. Let's put them all in the right position. At the very start, just so that I can keep a track of their counters. Okay. The counters that are most important for me to keep track of are pen nib, incense burner... Ornamental Fan, Magic Broom, Letter Opener, Beetle Shell, Joker Card, Nunchku. Yeah, and now that are all... Uh, those are all those ones? Yeah, beautiful. Okay. So, in another attack's time, we'll have double damage. Great. So, it's Parasite hit first. Ultimate Form hits Blaze away. That is great. So, now I can collect in Quirk, which if it didn't kill, I could just Blaze away afterwards. Lantern, Sludge Combo, the Channel Energy, as well as upon pickup, upgrade to random attacks. Only hits one in the deck. Let's hook another card out of here. Uh, Gravity Beat kind of does need to eventually get out of this deck, and this might be its timeout. I know I just upgraded it, but eh. Really, that was just me collecting a relic. That Blaze Away did absolutely nothing, and I'm not entirely certain why I played it. Okay, so I'm almost... I've almost played enough of the 
Friends of the Washoku Lobby here. Almost. No need to smith anything at this point. Token on the card out of the deck. Sprinkle Star Seal probably needs to go. A little bit too far to be relying on weakening enemies. I hate that I always have to select a card at the start here. That's what I was trying to say before. Like, getting shop mod or having shop mod installed would have been really good so that I could select relics that were good at one point for me but are no longer particularly great and remove those. Use the Parasite to just draw back into an ultimate shortwave. Recycle through a couple times here. Oh, gosh. All right. <laughs> Collecting just kills both of them for us. Max power. Convert your charge up stacks into energy. Gain one exhaustion. Sorry, add one exhaustion to your hand. Your attack damage is doubled this turn. You don't need to do that at all. Okay. Uh, Rampaging Magic Tool. Gain energy at the start of each turn. Uh, apply a random buff or debuff to yourself at the start of each combat. You can gain frailty, weakness, vulnerability, poison, or charge up. So, vulnerability is already weakened in its effect against us because we have the odd mushroom. Frailty and weakness, we can get, uh, we can get relics that will protect us entirely from those. Poison, we can't protect ourselves from, but we do kill in the first turn, so it doesn't really matter. Eight charge up is pretty good. Uh, getting extra curses is not that great. So, and we do want to continue opening chests, so we probably don't want to take Cursed Key here. We don't actually need the extra energy is another consideration we can make at this point, right? Do I want to take an energy relic here? Do I have to? I could just take Tiny House. I think maybe I do take Tiny House. Hey, it upgrades Ultimate Shortwave for me. Beautiful. Paid for itself already. Impressive more. So now we have Time Maze. You cannot play more than 15 cards in a single turn, so that is to prevent infinites. Good thing we weren't building one of those. Uh, at this point, I should probably also mention that I don't know the current incarnation of the Lord of Annihilation, the Lord of Annihilation being the end boss of Infinite Spire. Uh, after you lo uh, lo after you loop through the game three times, you fight the Lord of Annihilation as your kind of end boss, and then that's the quote-unquote end of the Endless. If indeed there could be considered to be such a thing. But I, I don't... I'm not 100% up to date with exactly how they work. And I've intentionally left it that way. If I get to them and this build for some reason just doesn't have the ability to kill. Awesome. That's awful, but awesome. Fine, that's how that goes. Ooh, shops are good, 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 good. Uh, Sundial, every three times you shop your draw pile, gain two energy. Works for us. Circle it, collect as many as you can. Okay, so those are going to be really annoying. We're going to try and avoid picking up a bunch of circlet. Uh, hand drill, whenever you break an enemy's bot, gain two vulnerable, as well as dream catcher, whenever you rest you may add a card to your deck. Bottle tornado, pick up, upon pickup, sorry, choose a power card, start each combat that in your opening hand. Uh, we do have ultimate form. I guess we'll put an ultimate form in our opening hand. Ah, uh, Vajra, Sludge Combat with 1 Strength. Anchor, Sludge Combat with 10 Block. Both of those great pickups. Lucky Rock, each time you play an attack, you have a 5% chance to gain critical. Molten Egg, whenever you add an attack card to your deck, upgrade it. I eh, probably don't want that. Uh, might now hold off on the rest of my purchases here. Ooh, obtain Circlet. We get 1 gold for having done so. Ooh. Yeah, we'll hold off. Lose. Ooh, receive the black egg. I've never even seen that. Ooh. Okay, lose 38 in order to get a black card, which we're probably just going to turn down. Yeah, we will. That defense there actually would have been really ba uh, powerful. Oh, well. Oh, wait. 
No, I can register my attack and then select my card afterwards. Okay, so we can actually be a lot faster about a couple of these combats here. Specifically by registering which I'm going to attack with, then making my selection and just letting it go through. Turn up, you can only become frail. Sweet. Already got that one active. Uh, unceasing top, whenever you have no cards in hand during your turn, draw a card. Not really going to be relevant for us at all ever, but yeah, nice to know that it exists, I guess. Uh, I don't know if I want to remove any more cards from my deck. It's upgrade menacing. That's two attacks you placed on any turn they... An enemy they hit this turn. Neat. Neat throughout. Kunai. Ooh, shroom bag. So I can get another shroom bag. Wild. Upon pick up, obtain two parasite. Parasite cards cannot be played. Playing a parasite will heal two HP and exhaust the card, then exhaust it. Uh, then draw a card, then exhaust it. Sorry. Kunai, every time you play three attacks in single zone, gain one dex. Do I go to the extra shop here? I don't just want to go to the extra elite. Uh, Stone Calendar, the end of turn 70 or 52 damage to all enemies. Mm, nope, can't do anything with those anyway. I have Sozu. Shuriken, every time you play three attacks in your turn, gain one strength. My god. Okay, so... Yeah, we have almost 90 relics at this point in time. That's pretty good. It's a couple relics, to be sure. A couple relics, at least. So the only dead stop to this run is the possible Lord of Annihilation. Or rather, the only possible dead stop to this run is the Lord of Annihilation. Bottled Soul. Upon pick up, choose an exhaust card. When we play that card, it no longer exhausts as well as Satchel. Um, I think maybe I do now take Satchel. Because my fights are obviously really short anyway. Uh, it'd be interesting if I could have done that on Parasite. Menacing, not exhausting, just sounds like it will shut everything down forever. Uh, Chemical X. The effect of your X cost cards are increased by two. Bottled Lightning upon pickup, choose a skill slot each combat that in the opening hand. Um, we do always want Blaze Away in the opening hand. Uh, Mercury Hourglass. At the start of your turn, deal three damage to all enemies. Always a pretty good pickup there as well. Guess I'll recall in this position. That's going to make uh, further nightmares worse for us, though. Do have to keep that in mind. Yeah, that could not have been better for us. Just double damage into double damage into double damage there. Take none of those. Flawless the boss. Ooh, that's something we're definitely going to do. Not upgrade, not mana convection. Still possible I fight any of these. And complete any of those quests in particular. Uh, Bewitched Hakuro replaces Mini Hakuro. Whenever you play a card or are attacked, gain one charge up. There's also Calling Bell. Uh, I mean, that is three relics. And three curses, but those three curses I can remove with the with the with the toking, the peace pipe. I think we do that because we're not going to be attacked that many times, which Hakuro is not going to trigger that many times for us. And we do want more relics. Clumsy and down, down. Ooh, not even bad relics. Not even bad curses there, rather. Uh, toxic egg. Whenever you add a skill card to your deck, upgrade it. Rune to the Cahedra and you're afraid to use full gain energy at the start of your turn, as well as shovel. You can now dig for relics at rest sites. All of those to a relic great pickups for us absolutely great pickups for us uh the problem is now that shovel and removing cards from my deck uh from my deck are competing at rest sites it's gonna be a little bit of a concern for us uh here i have the ability to go rest site two question marks sorry uh shop two question marks rest elite rest sh reward rest elite rest question mark so that's going to be a bunch of card removals for me, as well as a bunch of digging. No need for any of those, though. 
Still looking out for that Necronomicon. And in fact, always will be. Until the day the Necronomicon comes to me. Ooh! Come on! One and three! And Caridian. At the start of each combat, add a random power card to your hand to cost zero this turn. That's not even going to actually go into our hand at this point. As well, by the way. Um... Mm, card switch exhaust will instead discard 50% of the time. Card switch when played exhaust will discard instead 50% of the time. Uh, that's going to work badly for removing the curses from our deck, but it'll work really well for keeping parasites in our deck, just cycling through our deck constantly. I'll take Strange Moon. Sprouting Branch. We can't take another one of those. I don't know why there's a copy of it there. Ooh, yes! Finally, we got this event. We've always been prepared for it. This is the Colosseum event, so we are just going to be completely dunking on the Colosseum and picking up a ridiculous amount of relics. Fight for victory here against a Taskmaster and a Gremlin Knob. And let's see if we can do it. I suspect we might. Beautiful, it worked out. Uh, prayer Wheel, normal enemies drop an additional card. Reward as well as Thread and Needle. Start each combat with four plated armor. So now I get two more max HP per enemy I kill. So I'm going to take the three curses that I don't want out of the deck. Then I'll just start digging. I should probably keep an eye on the maths of exactly how much I'm overkilling by. Doofoodol, for each curse in your deck, start each combat with one strength. Well, now I'm no longer removing curses, by the way. Uh, on the first turn of the combat, gain Golem's Might. Neat. Slave of Blues also give us Jinjo. You can no longer become weakened. Great. No weakness, no vulnerability. God, it's all working for us. Uh, Ice Cream Energy is now conserved between turns. Pocket Watch. Whenever you play three or less cards during a turn, draw three additional cards at the start of your next turn. That'll occasionally happen to us, I believe. Uh, we can take this part to get a later shot, but I suspect we don't want shots for a while. Circle it. Collect as many as you can. Uh, yeah, okay. So that, that will start happening. That is the game trying to pull a relic and not being able to pull one because we've possibly seen too many relics or we have too many relics. It's not an immediate doom to the run picking up any extra relics, but it does mean we're starting to have a little difficulty. Yeah, two more circlets picked up. That's another one. I'll take the curse, sure. I mean, all of that extra strength is ridiculous for us. Giria is a ridiculous pickup as well. Very sad, I still haven't seen it. God damn it. Don't just give us circlets. I know you can give us other things. Collecting Quirk is enough by itself. I am very surprised. Uh, we flawless the boss, so we get a rare relic, and that was just a circlet as well. Rough. Just rough. Uh, Philosopher's Stone, we don't need the extra energy for it. Let me just take a Lizard Tail. So we have a bunch of things that are going to revive us. And there's the Lord of Annihilation at the end of this floor as well. I guess maybe I just want the easiest path there because it doesn't look like I can get any more relics. I could have sworn that you could still get relics at this point after the circlets start appearing because we did have a circlet appear much earlier in a shop. And we still had the ability to get relics past that point. I wish I had the ability to kind of just automatically eat all of those cards. Yeah, I'll fight for a rare relic here, but we're probably not going to get one. Hopefully generating this new act has regenerated the relic pool in some way. We'll see. It appears to not have. Yeah, and we got another circle there as well. All right, fine. Uh...
Let's lose an ultimate form. Ultimate short wave actually ramps up a lot better than ultimate form. Exactly. I'll take a sapphire key here so I can possibly go to the heart after all of this. We'll see. I don't know. Maybe it's possible. None of the enemies had thorns. Neat. Uh, I probably shouldn't remove any more cards from this deck at this point. But digging is doing nothing either. Oh gosh. I guess it should just be go to a shop. Higher likelihood I find something useful there, I think. Come on, shop. It's only, what, four more spaces away? Yeah, four and a bit, I guess. I'll take the absolute shortest path just by going to another rest. Despite the fact that I know the rest will give me nothing. So, like, menacing collecting quirk would be a great way to stun my enemy for 37 turns here. You know, just in case we need to stun the enemy for 37 turns. Take another curse. Sure. Ooh, Sling of Courage. At the start of each elite combat, gain two strength. And now, yeah, all the circles are way too expensive for us to play. Uh, another Blaze Away, pre-upgraded. And it's a quest completion as well. Guess that's us done? I probably shouldn't buy any more relics because I do have the shop at the start of the next floor as well. That is if I do get to actually fight the heart after all of this. The heart fight would be weird as hell because basically we just need to leave long enough to play collecting quirk enough times. But I don't know if we would. <laughs> Kill the transient. More than happy to. Okay, so here I should actually probably play my cards in the correct order. Just because it will have an impact. Right there. <clears throat> Losing a buffer. Can just exhaust all of these as well. Oh, yeah. One sec. Polaris unique. And then we can go for the Galactic Halo. Go for two more Parasites. Hopefully these draw. A little more than I was otherwise expecting. Another short wave. Another Parasite. We'll place a parasite there, but doesn't end up with a short wave. That's fine. That's fine. Okay, so collecting work is already super lethal, by the way. <laughs> Had been for ages. Kill a transient. Oh, I gave us a circlet. Lovely. Dig again and get ourselves another circlet. Okay, so magical 15 circlet run. So here is the Lord of Annihilation. I'll take millisecond bosses. Uh, yeah. Lord of Annihilation. Intangible. Reduce all damage taken and HP loss to one this turn. So that means that we should not be able to override that with the boot. Uh, and also, Invincible can only lose 999 more HP this turn. So I could stun the enemy for a ridiculous period of time. But then I don't think... Wait, they do lose their Intangible next turn, don't they? the start so I know how far we are from our Joker card. Okay, pretty far. Makes all of this a lot easier to do then. Okay, Decay is going to draw us some extra cards at least. Burn Regret and Clumsy just to gain back some hand space. These Parasites are just draw cards for us at this point. Just to cycle us back into our ultimate shortwaves. And I'm cycling through these ultimate shortwaves, ultimately, uh, just to prepare myself for later in the combat. Okay, 
is everything done now? This is a ridiculous amount of damage this would have dealt to the enemy. Oh well. I mean, I could menacing and stun. Yeah, let's menacing and stun them. See if that works. <laughs> Can only play up to 15 cards in a turn. I forgot about that. All right. Fine. Let's retain our collecting quirk. Oh, enemy is no longer intangible. I can just... Well, actually, no. The enemy has invincibility, right? So I can't just blow them up this turn. But I can... Menacing... Collecting quirks. Stunning the enemy for forever. Ultimate shortwave. Ultimate shortwave. Galactic Halo. Galactic Halo. These sparks do need to be played at some point. Uh, I suspect that is not now. Enemy is only stunned for one turn? Fine, I'll stun them for two turns by attacking again with a different attack, though. Oh, that is annoying that they were only stunned for one turn off of the back of that. I guess the multi-hits uh, were judged too strong with Menacing. Thankfully, Menacing keeps shuffling itself back into the deck, so I can't really complain too loudly. Okay. Hell yeah. Wait a second, which one of those blaze aways is bottled? I cannot tell. Damn. All right, I'll hold on to the menacing then. Okay, so ultimate shortwave into ultimate shortwave, definitely. And then I guess I double play menacing here. Menacing did go back into the draw pile. Great. Very necessary to have heard it. Wait, what? My turn has already ended? Thought it was going to attack the enemy a couple more times there. It's extremely sad. Oh, menacing, and it again discards itself. I'm gonna just spark and spark then. Can I queue up other cards to play after the Lord Annihilation has taken that hit? Yes, I can. So I don't know what even stopped my turn last time. If I let the Lord of Annihilation do other things, I think that they would probably be kicking my butt, but I am not letting them do other things strategically. I cannot believe I've discarded this menacing every time I played it. We are getting really lucky with that in particular. Yeah, I stunned the enemy again. Okay, so if I multi-stun the enemy, they just take my turn away? Annoying. Should probably play out all of those attacks, though. Mm -hmm. So I've already got 37 strength and 30 decks. So we're really, really good here already. Menacing got re-added. I'm not going to play it yet, though. Just play a spark. In fact, we'll play two of them. So each of those is giving me 18 charge up at this point. Good lord. 
All right, so the enemy is now burned off one of their effects and picked up Divine Shield instead. Uh, whenever they're inflicted with a debuff, they'll retaliate with Ultimate Memorisia, and they have three artifact on them. I don't know why that's constantly ending my turn. It really feels like it shouldn't be. There is no effect on the enemy that says, will end your turn if you do X, Y, and or Z. Uh, menacing is also going to be a problem here. How am I going to debuff the enemy, right? Okay, so the enemy has just removed a ridiculous amount of my buffs there and then replaced them on me. So we're restarting kind of like what would happen if we began the match at this point. Let's take upgrade, I guess. Thank you for giving me back a copy of uh, Ultimate Form. I can also double play this Ultimate Form as well. Neat coincidence to have there. All right, so Shredded. For every card played for the rest of combat, Lord of Annihilation takes 10% more damage from attacks. So we should just be able to kill them this turn, though, is my reckoning. Yeah, like, just play that in a single hit. It'll blow up the enemy. So the enemy used to have, like, a whole phase where they summoned a bunch of different enemies that you had to fight at the same time as well. That each had 999 HP themselves and their own unique mechanics. Kind of had, like, a lifelink thing going on. Uh, three quests of the quest log, strength potion, as well as add a black card to your deck. Yeah, I'm not going to take any of those. Uh, hey, we got another circlet for the kill. Beautiful. Fusion Hammer, you can only smith at rest sites, so we're never going to be smithing at rest sites past this point anyway. Really? Okay, so is there no way to exit Endless? Because the die quest is just triggered when you have a relic or some effect that brings you back to life. So a fairy potion, a lizard tail, cat cart, for example, would do it as well. Uh, also, Cursed Dice that we saw earlier would also be doing it. So that's not part of the continuation through. So what does Black Egg do for us at that point? Black Egg, right click to toggle. When activated, the next floor's boss will be the Lord of Annihilation. So this just gives me the ability to put the Lord of Annihilation at the end of every single floor, I think. Let me check. So you spawn at the end of this floor now. Oh, the next floor's boss. Okay, yeah, so that's not going to... Not going to be able to change it over the course of this floor. Fair enough. But the deck doesn't really have anywhere to move from here. And obviously, we're running out of relics in the relic pool. And that was the final boss. My expectation was that after that, we then move on to the heart. But I suspect that's not possible. Uh, probably indicated by the fact that we have Endless up here on the top left, rather than the keys that would actually get us into the heart section. For the moment, though, my name has been Rhapsody. The name of the game has been Slay the Spire modded, episode 200. This character has been Marissa, and we have been playing Infinite Spire in order to play an endless modded run. Hopefully you've been enjoying yourselves, and hopefully we'll see you next time.